All right. Let me say something that might spur some questions. Uh, we're going to have a quiz Wednesday. I read the homework sheet. Didn't say that. I'm going to change that. Chapter one. It's going to be just the definition part. Okay, so in section 1.3, they do frequency tables. So I'm not going to do that until we have our quiz on chapter 2. Because frequency tables kind of bleed over into histogram stuff, and that's all in chapter 2. Anything else in the homework? Any other questions? Yeah. Oh yeah, so this is, okay, I love it. I think last time, didn't we get to a point where we did the relative frequency? I'm pretty, yes, we did. I'm yeah. not even gonna ask you, because I remember we did. Um, they've already set up the classes, right? I'm sorry, I point there because it's a TV. They've already set up the classes, yes? Ooh. We have to do that? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I don't have to. No. He's just that good. Yeah. Um, it's very that. Expectation high. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was curious what this one was. I haven't got it. Cumulative yeah, relative <laughs> frequency. Because relative is a percentage of the, the total. All right. Yes. Relative is relative to the total. So, real quick, how many data points go into this first class? They've already. No, no they didn't. They're not in order. They're not in order, but it's pretty quick to tell. Yes? Three, five, there's two so far, and I think... There's a two right there. Yeah, three. There's a two there somewhere. Yeah. There. Yeah, three. So one, two, three. It looks like three. Is everybody with it? Mm -hmm. Okay. By the way, today we'll... Um, I forgot to bring my calculators, but... Not good, because I want to show you the very basic thing a calculator could do is you could put data into it and then have it sort that data. It's very important. Because um, if this data was sorted... This would be easy as hell, yes? So does everybody agree with me this would be three there? Let me do this. Come over here, camera. I'll we'll go over there. That's fine. So this would be three. How frequently does data show up in this class? Three. Out of what? Out of how many total? Were there? <coughs> Forty, yes? Relative frequency is out of the total. So another name for relative frequency is just percentage, right? You guys all with me? How do you get a percentage? Part divided by whole. How many data points showed up? Three. Out of how many total data points? Forty. The things you guys found amusing is funny. Okay. What is three divided by forty? One point five times five is seven point five percent. Point oh seven five. Does anybody gonna help me? 0. 0.075. Huh? 0. 0.075. 0. 0.075, okay. So that's 7.5%. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Let's do one more, so, and then I'll explain what that last column is. Normally, you don't do the last column until you get the total table. I'll show you. 6.5 to 12.5. <laughs> if this is ordered, this be easier. Did anyone do this problem yet? Let's see. I think it's just two. looking at a research for B is 2. 7 to 12. Oh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm doing V, I guess, right now, so yeah. I'm doing the second part of this. Um, two? Yes, two. Okay. So then this would be two out of 40. So this is researcher B I'm doing for whatever reason. Um, two divided by 40 would be? 28. 5, zero. So 0. Yeah, 5%, right? Yeah. 105? Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So cumulative frequency is just exactly what it's not. You accumulate as you go. So at this point, how much have I picked up? Seven and a half percent. Now how much total have I picked up? Another five percent. Another five percent, so total of? Twelve point five percent, right? You add five percent, you accumulate as you go. Are you guys with me? So what should be at the very, I'm oh, sorry? Oh. Uh, it should be a whole. At the very bottom of this column, you should say 100% or close to it. Why might that be off sometimes? Omissions. Uh, so remember that you round up. Rounded. Now here, these are probably not going to be rounded too much because 40 is actually kind of a nice number. 
But if you divide it by 17, these are going to be rounded. And you could just generally round down or up more often. So your sum could be not quite 100. It could be uh, 0.99 or it could be 1.01. Not quite 100%. Are you guys with me? Maybe you've seen that before. Percentages do not add up to 100 because of rounding. But sometimes you'll see that on little graphs. Okay. Is that okay? All right. Uh, just a question. Do you want for those to have those answers in percentages or is decim leaving them as decimals? Okay. It is preferred to have percentages. It is not wrong to have decimals. Oh. Do with that as you will. It is preferred in general to have percentages. Yeah. Do I have to do it by the moon definition? No. That's weird, but now I know. Yes. Cool. So it's not wrong to have them as decimals. It's just preferred to be percentages. Yeah. So you're fine. You don't have to redo it. Yeah. All right. Very exciting. Analyzing data and statistics. What? Anything else from the homework? So right now, this shouldn't be too crazy. It's definitions, which are not the most exciting thing, but... They're not crazy. The, the math isn't horrible yet. Right? Okay, okay. All right. Anything else from homework? All right, so what I want to do right now is I want to let you guys um, work on this. Very exciting piece of paper here. Did I put it up there? I did. Is you manage your quiz? Manage your quiz? So I got a little something that's going to act like sort of a practice for that. You're welcome. So I'm going to give this to everybody, and then I'm going to ask you to kind of like group up with other people. We'll see if you guys can handle that and work on this for a bit. Okay. The vein of the teacher's existence is passing out. Oh, God. <laughs> I get some idea of that. What's going on here? What does it work? Uh, Glock. What is it? Glock. Glock? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Have a math teacher that requires Scantron, they are not a math teacher. I don't know what the hell they are. I don't know. They suck. <laughs> the most important thing in mathematics is your work. So I'm much more concerned if you don't understand the concept versus you just made a little mistake, but you get the concept. You're going to get a lot more points in the second situation, right? And the only way I can do that is if I can see your work. All right, so go ahead. Uh, Let's see. pretty well. Um, what type of sampling? I think almost everybody got this. What, yeah, stratify. So there are questions they didn't, you know, the book does this also. So I wanted to give a problem sort of like what the book does. They don't give you every detail. But these three categories, you could argue that's breaking the population up into those three groups. Now, you might want to see what does light mean, what does heavy mean, but basically the idea is they broke the entire population into three groups, and then they took 
sum from each group. So that would be stratify. Strat. Y sum from each group. Yes, sir. So had it for it to have been cluster, the groups couldn't have been specific. It no, so been could have specific. We could have said it would have been really silly though. This is a beautiful example of why do we have different sampling strategies. Would it have made any sense for this problem to say we took all the heavy wine drinkers and all the light wine drinkers? That would be cluster. Cluster is all from some. Why wouldn't that make any damn sense in this problem? You're trying to see if there's a connection between stomach cancer and the amount of wine somebody drinks. Do you see why it makes sense the way they did it? Yeah, now, to be honest, they would actually make more specially defined groups. Probably like zero to one wine glass, one glasses of wine per week. One to two, a freaking whole box. You get boxes just to go, just to get it economical. So in the cluster, you wouldn't have specific groups, right? It would just be our group, not no wine, some wine. No, no, no. no. Stratify and cluster, you got the exact same groups. Stratify takes some from each. Cluster takes in some entire groups. Uh, all from some is cluster. Some from all is stratify. So in this problem, we had three groups. We broke everybody up into, and we took some from each. That way, if I saw 3% uh, of my people who don't drink wine with stomach cancer, and then 12% of my people that drink light, and then 30% of my drink people that drink heavy, that would be good evidence that wine affects stomach cancer recurrence, right? Or maybe I see it the other way around, like maybe wine actually prevents stomach cancer, who knows, right? The, the research right now is drinking a little bit of alcohol every week is good. Especially like wine, really dark red wine. Jeff did not say just now. <laughs> <laughs> I got this cool map. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, Dean. I did not just say drink everything all the time. I did not say that. Okay. <laughs> all right. Careful, kids. A little bit. Moderation key. You guys understand? You guys understand? Uh, aware of those re that research? Yeah. There are certain chemicals in the red wine. Yeah. Especially when you make the wine. The right um, is everybody cool with that part one? Okay. Be really careful when I say why, because that is the most important part. If you leave it blank, you're going to lose over half the points. Why is the most important part of that question? Uh, sample and population, right? So the sample I just tell you. So there's a few different ways you could just rewrite. Yeah. What does it say? 91 heavy winder, or you could. What do you get when you add them all up? 261. All right. So the sample is. 261, what? Ecuadorian. People in Ecuador, Ecuadorians. I'm assuming that's how you say somebody from Ecuador. Yes. Is anybody from Ecuador? Okay. Well, if I'm wrong, I apologize to anybody who's Ecuadorian. If that's the right way to say it. I just mm -hmm. didn't. Damn. So the, the funny thing is, the minute you know either the sample or the population, the sample has a specific number of things. The population is all of those things. So what's the population? All, all, all Ecuadorians. Or all people from Ecuador. Ecuadorians. Okay. Okay. Part C says, if the researchers find the percentage of stomach cancer occurrences in their sample is 3%, is that a statistic or a parameter? Statistic because it's data in regards to the sample. Good. It's the describing the sample. You must say, describe, I've got people that say, it's a statistic because it's a percentage. <laughs> no, no. And I understand where that's coming from because you guys are used to like, well, percentage, that's just don't be a statistic. No, no. So this is, we now know the definition of statistic is a numerical description of a sample. So when you tell me that's the answer, you say because it's describing a sample. Right? So why is it a stat? Describes sample. Shabam! So what would I change if I want to make it a parameter? Population. Yeah, just say if they estimate that the percentage of stomach cancer occurrences in the population or for all Ecuadorians was, that would be a parameter because now they're describing the entire population. Are right, you guys with me? Okay, I love it. Nothing too crazy yet. I hope. Number two gets a little bit crazier, but I tried to get you ready for this. I don't know if I want to mess with these lights. Can you guys see that all right? 
You got the nice TV over there too. Look at that. Um, so 2A, I forgot we already talked about this a little bit, but it's interesting. 2A is really a weird, it really depends on what you're assuming. So if you assume the place you go to has one, two, three, four, five, right? You could argue up to an interval. And we talked about this, I think, last time. Because if I have a five and you have a two, then I am three people behind you, right? Three more people until it's my turn, right? Him and then somebody and then somebody and then it's my turn. Yay! So the subtraction makes sense, doesn't it? Does every deli give out one, two, three, four? Mm -hmm. Nope. The main reason delis give that out is to maintain order. order. Now, somebody else might get an order before you because their order was faster, right? If I go in and order a coffee and you come in and you order a mocha latte, a chocolate, well, you can tell I don't drink that shit, right? It's <laughs> good. It's fine. If you do, have one. Okay. Give me a damn call. Um, uh, so this number assigned to you while at Delhi, I'm hoping for ordinal, because that's the main reason they give these things. But they could even give, I've gone to places that they give you a little dragonfly, and somebody else gets a little panda or something, you know, it's not even freaking numbers. But it's on their sheet, it's like they got the things in order, and they knew who's next. So I can't subtract all these pandas. What is panda minus dragonfly? I don't know. It sounds like a children's book. What do you get? You guys would. I could see somebody arguing nominal because of what I just said. Like it's in that case, it's not even names, but it's symbols. But still, I could see somebody arguing nominal because it's not really an order. You don't get your thing in order. It just is another way to reference you. You are uh, person number seven twenty-eight, right? That is your name. So I could see somebody arguing nominal. Normally, these problems you must give me the highest level that would make sense. Because in one respect, everything's nominal, right? You, could you be that that uh, twenty-two year old guy, or even more specifically, like that sixteen year old guy in a college class? Oh my god, right? That could be the person's name. Yes. Okay, maybe, maybe. Okay. So what's the answer to a? Everything except ratio, basically. Ordinal. Ordinal. Ordinal is the preferred answer. That's the one I'm going for. But I could see the other two. Uh, B. There's only one inch. There could be only one. Because again, I give it away a little bit. Well, I don't really. In the next one, I do. But normally, I say, "What level measurement do the following variables represent?" What would you ask people to get to to a place where you could calculate the RP? What would you ask people? What colors your hair? What colors your hair? And of course, the answer to that would be what kind of data? Yeah. Oh, categorical. <laughs> Red data. It would be more precisely <laughs> nominal. Oh. Right. Nominal and ordinal are both categorical. What? Right. Nominal and ordinal are categorical. Ordinal is just names that have an order they want to be in, but they're still categorical. They're still qualitative. Yeah. Uh, for the Y part, you could just say nominal because it's just hair names color. are categorical. Yeah, they're names of hair colors. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Math with hair colors. <laughs> yeah, that works too. Uh, nominal names of hair colors. And this would be, uh, I would say, ordinal keeping order of people. But you could argue for uh, interval. You could argue for nominal. But it really is fundamentally ordinal, right? Okay. So this is an example of something you're not used to. Depending on the way you argue it, I would take several different ways. And sometimes it's because of the way you're envisioning the situation kind of playing out. So this is fine. Just capture that in your explanation, right? Okay. All right. Do you understand why somebody might call this ratio? Oh, because they see percentages. They see percentages, but the percentages weren't the data. That's what we did with the data, right? Otherwise, everything in the universe would be ratios because I can make percentages out of anything. All right. What about number three? Fish weigh two kilograms. That's what we say because we're humans. What could it have been? 2.3. Yeah, 2.3189747661 forever, right? So for you, you said that weights and measurements are continuous. Yeah, most measurements are continuous, right? Weights, heights, lengths, those are going to be continuous because you get to be more and more and more precise. Speed. Speed. Um, well, I would say most measurements because you could measure, you could argue that you could measure the number of birds in a tree, mm -hmm. for example. But 
You guys all with me? Fish weigh two kilograms. Don't look at the number. Just say, what could it be? How much could a fish weigh? Could a fish weigh 1.98746 and it would make sense? Yes. Part B, what did I ask people? To get to that point. How many TVs? How many TVs do you own? How, what could be uh, a good answer for that? Just Could they be anything? No, it could only be zero, one, two, three, right? I don't care how weird, it only works on Thursdays. So it's about 14% of a TV. No, 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 no. It's a TV or an eight. That's what I thought. I thought the 2.3 was there to throw us off. Like well, a average. little bit, but it's what we did with the data, exactly. An average can be anything. So you've heard about people having an average two and a half kids or whatever. Right, I'm always like, you know, they don't want to see that half kid, keep that kid somewhere else. Billy's in a wheelchair. Right, it's like phasing in and out of reality or something. <laughs> Are you with me? Hey. Or they're like half <laughs> dog or something, I don't know. A little dog boy. Okay. Are you with me? Yeah. Island and Dr. Moreau? I don't know, I'm not going to go. Okay. So this is continuous. How would you say that, though? Why would you exp how would you explain it? But weight is a measurement. Not good enough. Huh? Weight is a continuum. Yeah, it could be anything. In an interval. And you can even give an example. It could be 1.987 dot 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 kilograms. Right? So if you say something like this, I'm happy. It could be anything. Any as precise, you could even say I could measure it as precisely to as many decimal places as I want, it would make sense. That's continuous. This one is discrete, why? No one owns part of a TV. Okay. Most well, they do, but we wouldn't call it a TV unless, you know, met some parameters. So either you got a TV or you don't, right? So you can only have a whole number of TVs. Okay, I like it. You with me? Yes? I remember in the textbook it said that shoe sizes were discrete. Yes, and we talked about like num uh, car doors, even though you could say you have a half a door. I know, but what if you were like, it's measurable, like you can measure. Countable. And it could be, yeah. And it Countable could be like is a good word. Seven and three quarters, like, you know yes. what I mean? It's not yes. just a whole number. Now you could argue. Well, example, like, well, even New Balance, they don't make it, like, perfect, but they, they live within. So this thing, New Balance kind of, like, makes shoes according to your measurements. Mm -hmm. Those measurements aren't precise. They're precise enough. So you're not going to get a shoe that's, that's, your shoe is point zero 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 one different than this shoe. Like, ooh, no, 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 right? So, yeah, that would be discrete. Even though you can have decimal or fractional parts, you can't have every possible number in between, right? You, you wouldn't say, I'm wearing a size 10.3897466666663 shoe. No. Who the hell are you? What? Handmade shoes. Yeah. Very handmade. Laser precision. Right? Yes. So I guess, like, piggybacking on what you said, what would be, like, the length of your foot would be? Oh, yeah. Length of your foot. See, this is why shoes suck. Length of foot is continuous. Shoe size is discrete. Think about it. Yes? Now, length of your foot is continuous because it could be. No, right? Not even just that. What could the length of your foot be? If I measure somebody's foot, it sounds like a horrible job at all. <laughs> How long could it be? Must it only be three, you know, uh, like, uh, uh, what, 11 inches? 11.5 inches, 12 inches, or could it be 11.987342976666 inches? Could I measure it more precisely and the answers make sense? So length of foot continues. Because it could have any value in a continuum. Size of shoe, discrete. Right? It's sort of like that, I don't know if you guys have ever seen a movie, Father of the Bride, who goes crazy and says, hot dogs come in packs of eight. Hot dog clones come in packs of 12, you know, so it's like your foot comes in a continuous size and shoes come in discrete size. Like, why? Of course, my feet don't feel right in the same shoes. Sorry. Weird one. Does that make any sense? Okay. All right. So you can't measure the number of TVs you own more and more precisely. Yes? If somebody said, hey, how many plants do you have in your house? And I said five, and they said, can you be more precise? No, I've got five plants. What are you talking about? But if I, if somebody said, 
like how tall is that, um, how far up the wall is that spot? And I said, five feet. Now, could you be more precise? Yeah, 5.139. Could you be more precise? Yeah, sure. Get a laser measure. Are you guys understanding? That would be continuous. I could be more and more and more precise. Um, so what I want to do today, with the little bit of time I have left, is get into chapter 2 a little bit and incorporate chapter 1. Um, one thing I wanted to do and I just didn't have time is I wanted to look back at the video from last time. Um, but maybe I can get one of you guys to help me out. Didn't we have a bunch of data last time? Does anyone have, didn't we start to make a table? A table? Yeah. Can somebody help me remember where I left off? So we had classes made, yeah, correct? Right? Four, all right. Four, so the four, width, four. just to get you all caught up, the width was the high minus the low divided by the number of classes. Anybody remember what I said about how many classes to use? Five to ten. Five to ten. She can ask. Most of the time we're going to use five or six because I'm not going to give you 800 data points. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so this is going to be how wide the classes are. Re recalling that our goal is to represent the data with a picture like this. Right? So how wide our classes are is going to depend on how far does the data go, high minus low, Divided by how many classes I want to use. That would tell me how wide each class has to be to cover the data, right? And what was the... Is that where we stopped? Oh, where yeah, that's it? probably where we... No, we kept going. Uh, where was the... Range. Here we go. So we went 30... Five minus low. Five, so we went with 5.2. All right. We rounded it up to 6. Yeah, so we got 5.2. We rounded it up to 6. Okay. And then the lowest data point was four, is that right? Yes. And then I said, okay, if the classes are six wide and the first class starts at four, the next class has to start where? Six over, so ten. Ten. But that means the first class has to stop at nine. nine. So if you look at the first class, it looks like a width of five, right? Mm -hmm. But I'll show you in a minute why that's not true. So you can only see the width perfectly this way. So now I just keep adding six. Add six, add six, add six. I think they get it, Jeff. Uh, you can do it, yeah, yeah, you can do it, buddy. There you go. Adding six is hard, okay. And now it's just a matter of we were starting to count how many were in each, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember what the data was. It was one, four, All five, right. three, one. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So the frequency, there was one data point that was in here. What was it four, five? Uh, three, one. Three, one, okay. Four data points in there, okay. So again, it's in the video. I made up a list of data that we were using for this. Okay. Do you want those numbers? Hmm? Do you want those numbers? Oh, sure, yeah. Let me throw it down here real quick. What you got? Uh, 4, 10, 11, 15, 18, 18, 18, 20, 20, 24, 25, 27, and 30. Okay. Woof. So 30 minus 4 is 26 divided by 5, 5.2. We round it up to 6. That's how we figure out how wide the classes are. Then I can set up my classes, right? And then I said, how many data points are from 4 to 9? 1. How many are from 10 to 15? 1, 2, 3. Why do we get 3? I had 2 11. 2 11s? Okay, that's probably my fault. Oh, yeah. All right. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 are from 10 to 15, so forth, yes? So this, the level of mathematics, very low. Of course, the whole idea is kind of new, but thankfully, the level of math is very low. Okay. Is that 25? Where is it 25? Next to the oh, yeah, this poor little dude. Is that a 25? I think so. Maybe. Okay. How do they get the relative frequency? Or what I like to call the real freak? 
Yeah, it would be, in this case, 1 out of 15? 14? Okay, 5, 10, 14, okay. Which is like 7 something percent? 7.14. 7. 7. 7. 7. So we'll say 1. We're doing this by hand, so you know, 1 does for places plenty. 4 out of 14. Are you guys all with me? Do you get the relative frequency? You just divide how many you saw out of total. So there are 4 out of 14 data points in this second class. So what percentage of the data was in the second class? 28.5? 6? 5.7? 7? So 28.6. Okay. Math boy. Sorry. <laughs> it's my one skill. Uh, 5 divided by 14. You want to see something really cool? 1 divided by 14 plus 4 divided by 14 is 5 divided by 14. So just add these two. You get 35.7. Is that about right? 5 divided by 14. Is that good? Okay. Okay. <laughs> 3. <laughs> 3 out of 14, I could do the same thing except subtract, so then I would get 20.5. Is that about right? 3 divided by 14? 21.4. 21.4? You suck, Jeff. Oh, 21.5, so 21.4 roughly. Okay. And then 1 divided by 14, we saw that already. 7.1. All right, let me stop for a minute. Every one of those is the same idea, right? Same idea, over and over and over. Well, you, yeah, you got some catch up to do. That's okay. You got videos you can watch. Okay. So just count how many data points show up in each class, and then just divide each of those by the total to get a percentage, because humans relate to percentages better. And I love it when I say it like that. It sounds like I'm an alien. I've heard that humans, but we humans, we like percentages. It makes more sense to us. We can imagine it as a piece of a pie. Uh, let me ask you this. Have you guys ever heard of something called a normal curve? Or the normal bell curve. Distribution. Normal, yeah, bell normal curve. distribution. Galton. What is, does anyone know what that looks like? The normal curve or the bell curve? You know, it looks like a freaking bell. I love it. Whenever you, have you ever heard teachers talk about curving grades? So all they mean is they have a curve and they pick it up and they move it. That's curving grades. When I curve grades, I move it and I sh make it a little bit narrower at the same time. Is that good or bad? I don't know. It's good. It's good for the everybody, actually. It's good for everybody. Just, just take it. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. Um, before I get too far, there is one more thing in the book that talk about cumulative frequency. You don't see this too, too often, but all this is, is as I move down, I accumulate percentages. So, for example, at this point, I've got 7.1. Then I pick up another 28.6, so now I get 35.7. Then I pick up another 35.7, so that is 70 point, no, 71.4. You guys with me? Just keep adding. Cumulative, meaning accumulate as you go. So the first one is always just going to be first one is the first one, yeah. Every time. Yeah, exactly, because I haven't picked up shit yet. I've just picked up that. Pick up more, pick up more. Here I'm at 92.8. And then when I add this, I get 99.9. .9. What am I supposed to get there? You're close to 100. Supposed to get 100, why is it 99.9? Because I rounded quite a bit, right? You guys were trying to make me round to two places, and I didn't want to. Man, because I've got to draw this by hand. So the more I round, the more off this could be. But you're normally anywhere from 99 to 101. Any more outside of there, you might have left somebody out. If you get 95%, you are definitely wrong. <laughs> you just left somebody out. They're Lost standing out there like, you're going to kill me? So you just left somebody out, poor little dude. Okay, is everybody with me so far? I think the freakiest parts of this are remembering how to get the width and then how to actually build classes. After that, it's just count, divide. I'm not even going to worry about this, to be honest. It's going to be in your homework. You just add shit, right? I don't care about it, to be honest. But in your homework, you just add stuff. Yes? Um, I'm sure sometimes we'll be guided with the questions we are given, but what is the typical way that the number of classes are decided? Oh, um, there is a formula involving logarithms that you can apply based on the number of data points you have. That's insane. So I told you guys, we're going to use five or six classes normally, right? The, the large, basically, the larger the set of data you have, the more classes you should use. 
So you're not going to use 10 classes unless you have thousands of data points. You could use 10 classes with less, but normally no. Are you guys with me? This is a little arbitrary totally. So that's why I love that the logarithm formula exists, because it's just silly. It's actually sort of arbitrary. Yeah. So that means really what will change most is actually our numerator, not our denominator. Yeah, the numerator is going to change not at all. It's based on your data, no, whatever right. your data is. It will it, it, oh, I see what you mean. From problem to problem. Five to six. From problem to problem. Okay. Yeah. The denominator depends on what you want to use, but we're going to use five or six normally. <clears throat> you guys all with me? If I give you a lot of data, you might use seven or eight. Okay, maybe. Okay. Um, so, now we're going to make a picture like this. Now, let me ask you this. What would it mean if I saw any gap at all? What would that mean? There was nobody in there, correct? Should we have any gaps? No. Because we don't have any empty classes, correct? All right, okay. He's setting something up. So here's this. All right. I don't know what I did with the poor little dude. I have two colors, and I lost one of them. All right. Oh, there he is. Put him where he's supposed to be, though. It's really confusing. Um, all right. This axis, what do you think this should be related to? Like, in which class were there the most things? First, second, third, fourth? Second. Second. Okay, so that should be related to the number of data points in that class, yes? And, of course, that would be the kind of histogram I asked for could be either a frequency histogram or a relative frequency histogram. Personally, I prefer relative frequency. But all that means, if I wanted a frequency histogram, this scale would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Because what's the highest frequency? 5. But I want a relative frequency histogram. How far does my scale have to go now? Yeah, so like up to 36. So what's a good... Scale to go by. You don't want to go by ones. Two. One, two, three, four, five. Right? Two, four, five. Three, four. Let's try four. Four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four, twenty-eight, thirty-two, thirty-six. Okay, we made. Okay. So you could have gone by sixes. You could have gone by whatever. Just got to make sure you get up to and beyond the highest one. So it's got somewhere to live, yeah? How's everybody doing so far? If I wanted, wanted a frequency histogram, that would have been easy. One, two, three, four, five. But I chose this one because of you. Okay. So this axis should be the classes. Now here's the problem. All right, don't write this. I'm going to make a mistake. Just don't write this. If I go four, nine, ten... 15, aren't I going to end up with a gap? I'm going to end up with an empty spot, yes? Visually, that's going to be misleading. That's going to be a lie. We try not to lie too often in statistics unless we're politicians. <laughs> that's why it's important you guys know statistics so no, the fewer people can freaking lie to you, including me. So I'm going to do something really weird, right? Okay, I'm going to do something very weird. <laughs> Here's how I remember these definitions. Do you all agree that, first off, do you all agree I exist? That could be a mass hallucination. There's a limit to me, yes? Like right there, that's where Jeff stops existing, right here. Right? There's a limit to me. You guys agree with me? I don't exist right here at that point in space, but I do exist right there. You guys agree with me? Okay, this is weird. I have a limit. I'm not everything. I'm just here. Then I have a boundary that if you stand closer to me within that boundary, I better know you really well. You guys, does everybody agree? We all have our own. Some of us is different, right? Some of us are close talkers. Some of you know, watch cycle. But. So I have a limit and I have a boundary. Are you all with me? And I love it. Some of you guys are like, what the shit is this guy talking about? Um, these are the class limits. The class boundaries go out by a half. So if I go down by a half, where do I go? If I go up by a half, where do I go? 
Do the same thing here. Go down by half. Do you see how those overlap now? Won't be any gap. Do you understand? That's the whole reason we do limits and boundaries. Okay. And if I just kept going, so now if my first data point is four, I start at 3.5. What, what was our width? Six, right? Yes? Just count by six now. 9.5, up by six, up by six, up by six, up by six. Does it take me down to the end? 33.5, yes? Now, you can pretend like you all understand what I just did. Do you remember the other way I said you could do these classes? Do you remember the first class you could write it as this? Two or less than. And the second class would be this. Inequalities. Where would 10 go? Which class? The bottom one, because that's where it's allowed to equal 10, yes? And then my, my scale would be 4, 10, 16. So if you set your classes up with these inequalities, you don't have to use those stupid half numbers. If you want to do it this way, the way the book does it, then you have to use the half numbers. Is everybody with me? You have a choice. You have a choice you can make. What's up? You all right? All right. You all look stunned. Are you okay? What have I done to myself? Okay. So, you could have this scale, or you could have this scale. If you use this. Okay. No matter what scale you use, how tall is the first class? One. No. Oh, sorry. Seven percent. Seven percent. Seven percent roughly, right? So just below eight. Are you with me? Now it's the easy part, right? How tall is the next class? That's right, kids. Twenty-eight, roughly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for all the help. How tall is the next class? 36, roughly, almost. Yeah. So we're going to go all the way up, almost to the top. And then how tall? How tall is this class? A little over 21, so a little bit above 20. And then how tall is the last class? Seven. Seven again. So it's the same. Now, does that look roughly normal? Does it look perfectly normal? Yeah. Hell no. Roughly normal, why? Because doesn't it have a bell shape to it? Doesn't it start low, go high, go low? What makes it roughly normal, not better? Why is it not more perfectly normal? Is it symmetric? What, what makes this not symmetric? One class makes this not symmetric. Second class. If only a second class stopped where? At 21, then it would be like looking really good and normal. Do you guys agree? Normal should have the same amount up and then it comes back down. Yes? This goes up and down, but it goes up fast and then it goes slow because this guy is much lower than this guy. I, I know we're using class width here, but if the higher your sample size, the more likely it'll be a very, very normal distribution. No, no. no? Say it again, the, the larger your sample size? The larger, the more data points you have, the closer you get to a normal distribution. No, no. Very, um, all right, real quick. Heights. Heights are normally distributed. So, and why does that make sense that heights would be normally distributed? Because there's certain heights, there's certain um, uh, biological issues that could arise, that could make somebody shorter or taller. So that's where things are misinterpreted and so forth. So there's a regular kind of place where we'd expect to see most people, right? If you saw somebody down here, that would be somebody who's like four foot tall. How often do we see somebody who's four foot tall? That depends, maybe you have somebody in your life who's four foot tall, but how often do you see somebody who's four foot tall? Rarely. Rarely. So that's why we use the word normal, which is kind of a bad word, you know, but still, for mathematics, it's fine. But for real life, there's nothing wrong with anybody, but this is what we would normally expect to see. So I don't know if anybody knows who Manute Bowl is. He played basketball. He's about seven foot seven, I think. I saw him coming off a, uh, I didn't see him coming off. I just got off of the plane, and I turned the corner, and there's this crowd of people, and then Manute Bowl's head is coming out the middle of it. I was like, that's Manute Bowl. 
So I talked to people that were on the flight, and they're like, yeah, he sat down, and his knees were right in his eyes. Tall-ass dude, right? That would attract a crowd even if he wasn't a basketball player, a famous guy. If you saw somebody seven foot seven, wouldn't you kind of do a double take? Not like me in a mean way, right? But just like, oh, we just don't see that normally, right? So the most people we see are in here. There are very few people out there, and that's why that's something we don't normally see. We're not saying that the person is abnormal. We're just saying that that occurrence is not a thing that we're used to normally have. That's one reason why we call it the normal curve, right? Um, height is beautiful because it's just a natural process that's normal. Uh, do you all know that IQ scores are normally distributed? You all know what IQ scores are, right? Have you ever seen Forrest Gump? Right, okay. So IQ scores are normally distributed, but that's kind of a cheat because we standardize the damn things to be normally distributed. Way to go, us, right? So, uh, sorry. Uh, if you ever did poorly an IQ test, don't worry about it. It's a bunch of shit, right? Okay. I like it. Okay. Um, so yeah, there are things that are normally distributed, and there are more things than what I just discussed that are normally distributed. And there are statistical things we could do to end up with normal distributions. It's really good to have a normal distribution because it's well behaved, and I know exactly what percentage of stuff is where. Okay, maybe. All right, that was all. Um, so, is this so far so good? There's one thing I'm missing that is very important that most people forget. If I just gave you this picture, how, what does it tell you? Oh, you need to label your actions. Yeah, so I don't remember. Did I say what this data was? Was it ages of people somewhere? Mm. Let's say it's ages of people at a bus stop. I'm a little concerned. Now, hopefully the four-year-old is with somebody. But yeah. This scale is going to be one of these two things. And in this case, of course, it's... You could just put RF for relative frequency if you want. You must label your axes or else you're not really giving me anything. I don't know what that is. Okay, maybe. Ages in a college classroom, do you think that they would be normally distributed? No. No? Yeah, no. In fact, they have a very specific shape they normally, normally, sorry, uh, have. Most people in most college classes are what age? 18, 20, 20, somewhere around there. So I normally see something like, I know I keep saying normal. Uh, let's say, yeah, this is 18, and then it goes. Kind of like a reverse bell. Uh, see, and then sometimes I see this. Right? Oh, that's me. <laughs> and then there's me. Yeah. I got the Sure. I've had, yeah. I, I'll never forget the 87-year-old guy I had in one of my classes. He was awesome. That's awesome. He kind of helped keep the class shut up in that corner. It's like, quack! <laughs> um, how do you guys feel about this? I want to show you one more thing, and then I have another handout. Don't know how you feel about that. Yes? Is this skew to the right? Say again? Is this skew to the right? Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, so a normal curve would look like that, right? Mm. Where does it look like somebody grabbed it and pulled? On the left side. Yeah. Actually, no. Like that. Oh. Yeah, so that would actually be skewed to the right. It's not really good over here because it really starts perfectly high. But this would be skewed to the right. Basically, it's wherever the tail is, is me pulling it. Think of it as a uh, thing of taffy, and you pull it. Doesn't it get like smaller and smaller as you go out? So yeah, so a perfectly skewed uh, right would look like this. So I had a normal curve, and then I just flipped the right side, and I pulled on it, yes? So skewed left would look like this. Oh, boy, Jeff. Yeah. So I, we're going to see this curve later, and I sometimes call them the job the hut curve. But um, that curve is actually a specific distribution we're going to use later this semester. Oh, and you're all very excited, huh? Infinite decay and infinite growth. 
No, no, no. You're thinking about exponential stuff. This is going to be um, something else. If I say the word, it won't mean anything. Yes. Are there like an outlier with whenever, whenever we still say it's skewed to that side? Oh, I see. So you could consider that's definitely an outlier, correct? Yeah. So very often skewed curves have definite outliers. It's like yeah. the only thing in that little area. Yeah. So outliers, we're going to define them better later. But right now, it's just whatever is far away from the bulk of the data. So it's sort of a subjective thing right now. There are some homework problems I ask you, are there any outliers? And you say, are there any data points that are really far away from most of the data, right? Okay. Um, so I'm gonna give you, oh, let me talk about one idea. This idea is so nice. Let me see if you guys agree with me. So what we're in the middle of doing, by the way, I kind of got into this a little bit because section 1.3 does frequency tables. And then section 2.2 two does histograms. So it kind of bleeds over. But all of chapter 2 is something called descriptive statistics. So if I take a sample, one of the very first things I want to be able to do is describe what my sample looks like. Are you guys kind of with me? A histogram is just descriptive statistics because it's just a visual description of the sample we were working with, correct? I haven't started taking averages. I haven't started making predictions. So descriptive statistics is just describing the sample you're working with. Descri describing the sample. It could be visual. It could be uh, just this description about it. Okay. Inferential statistics is going to be the next half of the class, which is going to be when you make predictions. So for example, right now, there's uh, elections happening and a big one coming. So a lot of the stuff that you might run into, even if you try to avoid it, is it looks like 44% are going to vote for this guy, 48% are going to vote for this guy, right? I think we talked about this a little bit, I can't remember. At the bottom of the screen, at the bottom of the thing, you always see plus or minus 4% or something. Right? You guys kind of with me? So that is inferential. I am predicting something. But the plus or minus 4% is, is kind of like me covering my ass. Yeah, it could be wrong. It's like, what good is that? So if it's 44 to 48 and they both are plus or minus 4%, couldn't the other person be, actually be winning? Do you guys understand what I'm saying? If it's 44 to 48... And each one is plus or minus 4%. Couldn't this one be 48 and this one be 44? Yes, totally, right? It's a crazy ass thing about polling. How do you make this number get, go down is to take a larger sample, because then you're more sure about what you're seeing, right? That, to, be, to tell you right now, I know I just talked about it, this is going to be chapter 8, if I remember correctly. Oh, margin of error? Yes. Okay, we'll learn the formula behind that plus or minus 4%. So we are right now still in descriptive statistics. So here's one of the best little descriptive visuals you can make. Um, it is called, the book calls it a stem plot. Well, I'm having several puberties in a row. Stem plot, the book calls it a stem plot. It's actually called a stem and leaf plot. This is give the poor little dude its full name. Stem and leaf plots, these are not always useful. And once you see how they work, you'll realize they're not always going to help you. But if I had data that look like this, 10, 14, 15, 21, 24, 25, 25, 26, 27, 28, 30, 32, 41. Okay, that's plenty. Mm -hmm. Sorry. It's going to happen a lot. I'm just going to make up some numbers sometimes. Oh, well. That's already in order. Yes? Beautiful. So one of the first things we'll do next time is, is I'll have all my calculators with me. We'll learn how to sort data first thing next time. That's stupid useful. All right? So the $100 calculator better be able to put stuff in order. Um, my stem. So I, I, these digits, these numbers all have something sort of in common. There's a bunch of them with the number one first and a bunch of them with number two for, first and so forth. Yes? So I'm going to make this. I'm going to make my stems and my leaves. So what comes off of the one? What digits come off of one? Zero, Zero four, five. four, five. Is 
that all right? What comes out with two? One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. List repeats. Five, five, six, seven, eight. You'll see why in a minute. Off of the three. And off the four. Is that a one? It's just a four. Yeah, 41. 41. Chip it. I thought it was a stop for a minute. What's up? I thought it was a parenthesis. Oh. No. Is that 32, 33? Yeah, I mean. Is that better? Yeah. All right. So the day I can't read my own writing is the day I'll retire. I, I, I had this guy, uh, he would write this stuff, and then he used to do it over the overhead with the roller dude. You ever seen that before? And they would say, can you roll it back? What did you write there? And he says, does anyone remember what I wrote here? <laughs> it's a bad oh day. God, you have to retire, dude. So I can still read my own writing. Which is okay. You're all like, good for you, Jeff. We're having trouble. Okay. But please, dear God, I'm not going to take it personal if you ask me. If I'm doing something real quick, it's not going to look good. Um, can you guys, real quick, if you do this, what does it look like? Oh, the same thing as right. the distribution. It looks like a histogram, right? Now, it doesn't have enough classes, but that's not the point of this. It's just supposed to be a really, really quick visualization. This is section 2.1. Histogram is better at section 2.2. Two. Ooh, improve it. Right? So this is a very quick, rough kind of histogram idea you can use. Do you see that? It isn't really, but it's kind of given us that idea. Most people are in the 20s. Now, to be honest, this is not finished. If you only gave me this, you would lose points. And this is why. It's missing a key. When you give me this, if you gave me, if you gave this to somebody in the real world, you would not also give them the list of data because that's what this is supposed to take the place of. So this could be 1.0, 1.4, 1 1.5. I don't know yet. So you have to give me one example so I can read the whole thing. So you can say 1, 0 is 10. Now I can read the whole thing. What would change if the data... Don't write this. But what would change if the data was actually this? Just the key. The key would change, right? Just the key to come in the right place. Because they'd still be ordered the same way. Because now I'd say 1, 0 is? 1.0. 1.0. Now I still know how to read the whole damn thing, right? But this, this wouldn't actually change. It doesn't need to change at all, right? What if my data was 100, 140, 150, 210, 240? This stays the same. What's one zero mean now? A hundred. Now I can read the whole thing. You guys see what I'm saying? Yes? What if you had like um, specific numbers like 111, let's say? So yes, then good. Then you would pick different uh, stems maybe? Okay. Right. Oh, so for example, uh, if I had 111, 115, 124, 127. Your stems might be 11, 12. Do you see what I'm saying? And then your key would explain how the hell to read that shit. Because maybe. Well, if, huh, sorry. I'm sorry. What if there was just like a 30 in there? What would your. <laughs> then, okay. <laughs> so this is, remember the very first thing I said. Not very good. Stem and leaf will not work for all types of data. Okay. So data that. Um, like if all my data was 111, 111, 111, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 113. I'm not going to make a stem belief for that shit. That shit, right? Um, you guys with me? So yeah, if you had 130, here's what would happen. You ready? Here's what would happen. You'd have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All of these would be empty. And you'd have, yeah. right? And then you'd have one, five, and then your key would say 11 thing one is 111. Does that make sense? Okay. But again, stem and leaf will not work for every type of data. Histogram will not work for every type of data list you get. It works for most, but not everything. Are you guys all? All right, so let me give you this. And. I think I'm gonna just to give y'all a little motivation because y'all looked really bummed out. I'm sorry. We are gonna leave a little early, but I do want you to work on this a bit. Let's see how far we can make it. Is this group or solo? 
I'm going to let you leave. If you don't want to work with other people, you don't need to. I'll be, look at me being all nice. Right? Try that first side. If you want to work together, please feel free to do so. Where's Tori, by the way? Is that Tori? Okay. All right, guys. So, Stephen Lee. Never skip anybody. You want to show empty classes. So I don't think there were any 20s, right? Mm -hmm. But you still got to put a 2 there. And the highest was 5? Yeah. Okay, I like it. So what do you got for the first class, the first row? 2, 3, two, three six. 6. Okay. For this, this one is empty, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't skip anybody because you want to oh. show empty classes. That's information. 3. What do you got? 31, 32, 32, 33, 35, 37, 38. Okay, I think that's it. Do you have to go in order? Doing it live. Technically, no, but it's not a bad idea. This is a really nice way to order a whole set of data because you're focused on just the, the decades, right? So it makes it a little easier to, to sort. You didn't have to sort it, though. You're fine if you didn't. 40s. 1156 and 50s? Zero two. Zero 02. Okay. And this is not complete, of course. You've got to tell somebody how the hell to read what you just did, right? Especially me. So it doesn't really matter. You just got to pick one. So I almost always pick the first dude. Okay. So now somebody knows how to read this. Yes? They don't need to see the whole list of data. They can just read this from that key. So what would change if the data had been this instead? And you can see how it's exactly. Yeah, the key would now say one, two equals. That's it. The, that's all that would change. This would not have to change. That's the beauty of stem and leaf. The key has a lot of information in it. Okay, maybe. Is that all right? This guy. So I love to ask the question. Well, let me ask this question first. Well, let me ask this one. How many empty classes are there? Two. Two. So how many total classes are there? Six. Six. How many people are in this class? Two. 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 This class, I'm sorry, this class is two. How many total people are there then? Eleven plus six plus two plus one. Twenty. Twenty. You guys see that? So why this one has to be relatively easy to do because somebody already put all the work into it. Right? And by the way, is this a relative frequency or frequency? frequency? So that's why I could just say there's 11 people. If it was relative frequency, I actually wouldn't have any idea. It'd be 11%, but I don't know how many people. So I know there's 11 people in the first class, blah, blah, blah. So I know there's 20 total consumers. Oh, because it would be 11%, but you don't know how big the population is. Exactly. So thankfully, this was a frequency. I could do some stuff. We already said there's six classes. How wide is each class? 20. By the way, do you guys understand that this person that made this must have used this, yes? That's why they don't have the half. That's why they don't have the limits and the boundaries, yes? Maybe? No? Okay. Oh, I just took it for granted. I'm like, it looks nice. It's 20. No, no, no. It's totally 20. But why doesn't it have the decimals that we had on ours? Because we did it the textbook way. So we had gross numbers. So too bad for us. Um, 
So the, the thing is, the more comfortable you are with all this algebra happening, the easier this scale could be. It's a bit of a trade-off. Um, first thing about this problem is, what the hell does at least mean? 40 or more. Yes, it means or more. Our brain sees the word least and thinks less. But at least is that or more. You must be at least this tall to ride the ride. Here's Jeff. Maybe next year, Jeff. This is a true story, man. And next year, the damn ride was shut down. Oh, that sucks. Just like up there. No, sorry. It wasn't true story. Um, that was traumatic. I'm still having trouble with that. <laughs> so at least 40 weeks is 40 or more. That would be a total of how many people? Three, Three out of? 20 people is what percent? 15%. 15%. Kicking the ass in. So, you need to be able to read a histogram that somebody else has made. That's relatively easy. And what we'll do first thing next time uh, after the quiz is create our own histogram. Okay. I like it. By the way, before I forget, a lot of you guys still haven't filled out the survey. <laughs> please fill out the survey. Do it. There's two surveys. Fill out both surveys, please. Thank you. Okay. I'll see you guys. Let me know if you have any questions or issues. Professor, I felt guilty about the homework. The people can't even do the survey. I'm doing alright. Yeah. Um, so I, I still have a question about how you got three. Yeah. Uh, 